I'm going to be in ICU for a few minutes. Right, Dr. Courtney. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Listen, I uh, hate to drag you back to the hospital, but I really wanted to check in on Mrs. Kikorian. Oh, it's, it's perfectly all right. I've got something important that I want to do here anyway. How about if we meet down here in the lobby in 15 minutes? Fine. Me and Gail were so happy, weren't they? They could have been happier than I was. You gave me the greatest cause for celebration I've ever had. Look, uh, can I ask you a favor? Anything. Don't, uh, don't expect to do too much I mean, at, at the beginning. I understand. Listen, just having you there while I try and rebuild everything that I've destroyed is all I expect. the most difficult confession I've ever had to make in my life. Yes. I guess the best thing for me to do is to start at the beginning. Not too long ago, I found out that you and Monica spent the night together after the quarantine was lifted. Monica did everything in her power to try and convince me that nothing happened between the two of you. But I wouldn't listen. I said dreadful things to her, things that I'm going to regret for the rest of my life. But I've been fortunate enough for Monica to give me a second chance and forgive me. And I guess that's what I'm asking you to do. Alan, I... Wait, wait one second. Just let me finish right for you. My... My jealousy vented itself on you as well as on Monica. I swore that I would ruin you professionally. And I set out to do exactly that. I had the Hardwick board change their minds about you. I convinced Larry Forsyth to do that. I, um, had my father change doctors. I did everything in my power to convince Steve Hardy that you were no longer any good for your job and to shake his confidence in you, but I'm very pleased to say that he didn't waver for a second. And lastly, in terms of your report to the Hardwick board, you were right. The one that I handed in was virtually the same as you gave me originally. For all of these things and anything else that I may have done to undermine you, I'm bitterly ashamed. And I just hope that you can possibly understand and forgive me for it one day. Alan, I appreciate what you're telling me. And I do understand that it was very rough for you. I thank you for your understanding. I must say that is not exactly the reaction that I expected somehow. What do you mean? I, uh, I was waiting for surprise, for anger, for, for shock. Uh, you listened to it all very calmly as if you knew what I'd been doing all along. I didn't for a long time, Alan. Monica told me about it. When? The night she assisted me with Mrs. Kerkorian. That was the night that Laura had her accident. I see. Do you think that you are going to be able to forgive me for all this one day? Of course I can forgive you, Alan. I, I've never experienced the kind of jealousy you're talking about, but I can understand now what would drive someone if it took over. Would you consider continuing to work with me in the cardiac room? Consider, Alan, I've dreamed about this since the first time we sat out and talked about it. Do you think that uh, you'll have any problems convincing the board that I am still the right man for the job? No. I've already spoken to Larry Forsyth, and I have convinced him to stop interviewing replacements and to reconfirm their offer to you. And I'm glad to hear that. Did you put this on my desk? I tore that up and threw it away. How in God's... No, I don't have to wonder at all how that got... Rick, will you do me a favor? Can I please have that back just for a little while? Well, could we, uh... 
shake hands on a friendship and trust that should never have been broken in the first place? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Not only should I have known that Monica would never be unfaithful to me, but I also should have realized that you would have never been unfaithful to Leslie. <laughs> oh, darling, I'm so sorry. We were just having some cocktails before going down to dinner. Oh, Monica, I've never been so happy to see anybody <laughs> in my whole life. Thank you, Lara. I've missed you. You know I feel the same way, Monica. Welcome home. Thank you, Eric. Well, I suggest that we all go down to dinner and leave Alan and Monica to have a little private. No, please don't go. Please stay and have a drink. Are you sure that's all right? Positive. Whatever my beautiful wife wants, she gets. Evening, Tracy. Aren't you going to say anything at all, like, uh, welcome home, and nice to see you again, Alan? My goodness me. Nothing to say. This has got to be a first. I've never seen you speak this before in my life. Just don't have anything to say, Alan. It's your life. I'm glad you realized that. A brief little word of warning to you, oh, Tracy. I'm in no mood, Alan. You better change your mood and listen to me very carefully. Tracy, listen to me very carefully. If do anything again to destroy my marriage. I will tell you, dear daddy, about the whole ugly story in your first unsuccessful attempt. Well, this place is beginning to feel like home again. Welcome home, Monica. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, let me give you a hand with the drinks. Monica, I am so glad that you're giving Alan another chance to prove to you how much he loves you and how much he needs you. Well, Lila, um, I'm willing to give it a try. That's, uh, that's really all I can promise at this point. I understand, dear. And did our talk this morning have anything to do with your decision? Yes, it did. Uh, I haven't been able to think about anything since. Well, now, you must never breathe a word to anybody about that because Alan and Tracy must never know about Edward's mistress or the son that they have together. No, Lana, well, I promise I won't say anything, but I can't, I can't help being curious. I mean, well, how old is he now? Where is he? Well, of course, this is something I never discuss with Edward, but as far as I know, he went to, uh, to England after his ma mother died, and uh, he's refused any financial support from Edward ever since. Uh, he must be about a year and a half younger than Tracy now. Oh. Mother, I know how much you love Monica, but you can't monopolize her first night back. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. I give you back your beautiful wife. That's all I want in this world. <laughs> I, I would like to propose a toast. Now, the fact that I'm drinking uh, plain sparkling water doesn't diminish in the slightest the deep feelings that go along with this. To Monica, my daughter, thank you for making your husband and your father so very happy tonight. You know, I've always thought of you as my own daughter, and I want to see you take your rightful place in the Quartermain family from this moment on. Aren't you going to tell us, Tracy? Well, excuse me, please. I have uh, just remembered a previous engagement. Rick, look, maybe I can make it easier. Really. Um, I was doing a lot of thinking today, too. Realizing a lot of things. And what we talked about in your hotel room, a wonderful, crazy dream that we both know never could happen. Could have once. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If things have been different then, but, but we can't ignore what's happened since then. And I realized that, that my place is with Alan. And I know that you realize your place is with, is with Leslie and Laura. And not just because you love them, but because they're both, they're both a part of your life. A, a big part. Anyway, I'm going back to Alan.
Always you have to know that. I do. Monica. Look, Monica, I... Don't say anything, okay? I'm grateful for you coming over. And I understand. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, no, uh, that's all right. Back to bed. <laughs> <laughs>